with this function here to find the inverse of a function we start by setting y equal to the function and remember that inverse functions uh, reverse the direction of inputs and outputs so if a function sends x's to y's then the inverse sends y's to x's um, and so to to model that as we uh, go through this process we switch the x and the y's so we have x equals uh, y minus 2 um, over y plus 6. Okay, then we want to solve uh, for y here. So we first multiply both sides by the denominator um, of this, so y plus 6 on both sides. And that gives us here on the left, we're going to go ahead and distribute the x through. And that gives us xy plus 6x equals y minus 2. Okay, now everything that has a y, we want together on one side of the equation. Let's go ahead and move them to the left side. So I'm going to subtract y from both sides. And that gives me xy minus y. Um, and then the plus 6x equals negative 2. And then subtract the 6x over because it does not have a y with it. Okay, so then we've got xy minus y equals uh, negative 6x minus 2. Now the reason we want all the y's together is because uh, then we can factor it out. And we have y times x minus 1 equals negative 6x minus 2. Okay, we divide both sides by x minus 1. We have y equals negative 6x minus 2 over x minus 1. And so now we've got y by itself. This now is our, uh, our inverse function. Okay, so this is our f inverse of x. Okay, now um, for stating the domain and range um, of these, uh, of, the, of the inverse, uh, first what we're going to do is uh, we can state the domain, domain pretty easily. Um, so the domain, domain is, uh, well, we know that we can't divide by 0. And so x minus 1 cannot equal 0. And then if we add the 1 over, we get x cannot equal 1. And writing that in interval notation, that's from negative infinity to 1, union 1 to infinity. And note the parentheses at the 1 because we are not including it. Okay, we also want the range of, uh, of the domain and range of the inverse. So for the range of this thing, we can actually go back to uh, our original function because we know that the range of the inverse is the same as the domain of the function, okay? Um, and so, well, looking at this function, we know that x plus 6 cannot uh, equal 0. And uh, remember, we switched x to y, though. So really, it's y uh, plus 6 cannot equal 0, okay? And of course, we see that uh, right here after you switch the, uh, the x and the y. You've got something here that has your y. You know that y plus 6 cannot be 0. So, coming over here then, uh, subtracting 6, we get y cannot equal to negative 6. And writing that in interval notation, we get negative infinity to negative 6, union negative 6 to infinity. Okay, for part B, this one's a little bit, uh, a little bit trickier, um, and I'll show you kind of what happens. I'm going to actually start by just stating the domain of G, and that's going to help us as we kind of look at things. Uh, domain... Oh, and you know what? We were supposed to sketch the graph of the function along with its inverse. Sorry, let's go ahead and do that um, up here. Um, so this rational function here, we're going to go ahead and sketch that. Uh, we're going to use our calculator because we don't know how to sketch this by hand yet. So let's go to our, uh, our calculator. And uh, let's go ahead and add a graph. And uh, go ahead and plug in the function that we have. So we've got... Uh, x minus 2, so in parentheses, x minus 2, and then we'll divide that by x plus 6. Okay. And so there's a sketch of our graph. Let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit so we can get a better picture of that. Zoom out. Okay, and we can see now this, uh, our, our graph here. I won't go, I won't draw that because, uh, well, you can go, you can see the picture right there. Um, so that's our, our function f, and we also want the ske a sketch of the function of the inverse 
uh, the, sorry, the inverse of the function. So to add another graph to this picture, which I'm going to do, we're going to click tab and uh, and go ahead and, and graph this. So negative 6x minus 2, and then divide that by x minus 1. Okay, and graph that. And uh, let's go ahead and um, just move this a little bit so we can see. Okay, notice that we see the symmetry that we expect in the graphs of uh, inverse functions. Okay, we expect symmetry along the line y equals x. Okay, let me go ahead and just graph that just so we can see y equals x at the same time. Okay, we see that we've got our symmetry across that line. All right, now let's go ahead and look at, uh, at part b. I'm going to start off by just stating the domain of, uh, of this function g. We know that when you have a square root of something, then that something has to be greater than or equal to 0. And so if you add 4 to both sides, you get x has to be greater than or equal to 4. Okay, so our domain here is from 4 to infinity, okay, including 4. Let's, uh, let's state the range of it as well. Uh, this function, we should be able to see, know the range of it just from being able to graph this. Okay, let me go ahead and sketch the graph. Um, we know that the, the square root function looks like this, and the x minus 4, that's a shift of 4 units to the right. So if I move 1, 2, 3, 4, it's going to move like that. All right. Now, um, we can see the range now from the picture. It starts at 0 and goes up to infinity. So from 0 up to infinity. And this now tells us our domain and range for the inverse function. Let's go ahead and find the inverse. We've got y equals the square root of x minus 4. Remember, we switch x and y. So we have x equals the square root of y minus 4. And now uh, let's square both sides and we get x squared equals y minus 4. And then add 4 to both sides, we get x squared uh, plus 4, plus 4 is equal to y. And so this uh, is our in inverse function. This is g inverse of x. Now I want to point something out here that's super important. If you just look at this expression without the context of the problem, um, it looks like the domain of this would be all real numbers. However, if you come back and you realize that actually that x okay was actually the square root of y minus 4 it was not the negative square root it's just the positive square root and so the x has to be positive okay now that comes from this domain and range that we found of g okay the g domain and range and of course we know those flip for g inverse so the domain of g inverse is the range of g so 0 to infinity, and the range of g inverse was the domain of g. So that was 4 to infinity. Okay, And so our, our inverse function is, while it has that same expression of x squared plus 4, we have to actually put with that the restriction that, our, uh, that x okay, has to be greater than or equal to 0. All right, let's go ahead and, uh, and graph this. So, and I'm going to show you how to, uh, to put in this condition in the calculator as well. Um, let's go ahead and just create a new document, and uh, we'll go ahead and start, go to our graph. So we're going to go ahead and sketch first our, uh, our original function, okay, which was uh, the square root of x minus 4. So square root of x minus 4. Okay. And uh, then we're going to go ahead and sketch it, or graph its inverse. So if we click tab, uh, it's this x squared plus 4. And so x squared plus 4. However, it's not for all x values. And in the calculator, the special thing that you have to do is you go to uh, this the control and then the equal sign. And this vertical line, that's a it's a conditional, it means that we're going to put that line and it means we're only going to graph the thing before it when the conditions after this are met. And so then we're going to say that x needs to be greater than or equal to 0, which is again in the same spot. Control equal side for the greater than or equals. Okay, So we're going to put an x 
control equals greater than or equal to zero and then graph that okay and that gives us that uh, that parabola but with the restriction and so now it matches of course we've got that symmetry along the line uh, y equals x let's go ahead and graph that so we see it